So Twitter thoughts have informed me that in order for you dump truck fucks to pay attention to a long ass video, you need a hook to pull you in. And now that I have your undivided attention, we need to talk about something that's been a long time coming. So as most of you already know, I worked as the project manager for I Love Compossible a lot for two years. I took leave because of real life situations and I used to have a video talking about what it was like to work with her. I took it down so that I could revise it uh, and redo it later. Long story short though, it was mostly a good experience. I had a lot of lasting friendships, I gained some very important work experience that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to get through traditional means, and I gained a lot of confidence in myself and my own abilities. There was just one itty bitty, teeny weeny, giant ass problem, and it was not with KP. It was with someone who I had never even met. This is the tell of Michael Boggs and his illegal bullshit. So, if you've been keeping up with me on Twitter, Michael recently got employed by an animation YouTuber. I won't be saying who now, as I know most people on the internet act when they think they know what they're doing, and when they think they're doing the right thing. And if that person ends up dealing with the harassment that KP has been put through all these years because of something that I said, I would not be able to forgive myself. So I'm asking you to listen closely and be critically minded right now. To give you context to what I'm talking about, I've linked a previous video down below to educate you on a non-KP leaks. What happened with that, covered by Corey and Zane. Corey was a team head during the time that the situation took place. You can watch the video in its entirety, but here is a short synopsis. So Corey and Zane compiled all of the drama, quote unquote, from over the course of time between when KP and the team made the Let's Meet John Delancey video to the non-KP Twitter account. It showed confirmation of four specific people being behind the account. Bogsy, Lost, Oblivion, and Sean. Oblivion impersonated KP and made a fake cam girl image that hurt her reputation and put her in a compromising position. This was sexual harassment and also falsifying information. Lost had been gossiping to other community members without confronting KP. He was not direct about issues that he had with her. He was generally untruthful. Again, fraudulent information. Mag and Christian both had calls with KP, which were illegally recorded without her or applicable party's consent. Team assets and personal information were leaked as well. Northbridge, another person, leaked all of the information he could access to the Twitter account. Illegal photos were taken without team members' consent by a person who went by the alias of Twyfag at BronyCon 2016 against both Khan's rules and also against, you know, the law, because it was in a private space. Rule specifications or not, that's just straight up illegal. People harassed and go to KP into apologizing for things that she did not do, which is unlawful confession. I highly encourage watching the full video if you would like a detailed account of the events. Otherwise, clown meat. So now that you're educated, you may be thinking, well, this was years ago, why are you bringing this back up now? Well, first of all, a majority of people are incredibly uninformed on this situation because they have no way of confirming their sourced information. More specifically, the lies that were spread. Uh, claims that Rachel was a slave driver, claims that Rachel wasn't accommodating to people on the team, claims that Rachel would not let anybody quit, claims that Rachel was a terrible human being, things that could not be backed up by evidence and fact, which is a huge issue in the Bernie community. First of all, if you are getting your sourced information from somebody who does not have media licensing, does not actively investigate information that they have, and does not present any of the information that they have unbiasedly, they are not a reporter, and they are not a legitimate media source, they are your grandma, with too much time on their hands, gossiping. So the rest of you should be extremely critical of any information that you see that lacks reasonable sources, evidence, and proof, and writes it as fact and not theory. Do you want to know why tabloids can get away with claiming that Ryan Gosling has like a big foot, big titty girlfriend or whatever the fuck, it's because they acknowledge that it's a crackpot theory and not a fact. These are not credible news sources, they don't even try to be, and you shouldn't be taking anything that they say as fact because they don't do the work to even confirm their slander. KP was quiet during the time that a non-KP leaks happened, so people assume that this info was true at face value, which is another part of the problem. 
Secondly, while many individuals were involved, Michael specifically started this fire and he should be held responsible for that. Legal action cannot be taken against him at this time, as there's time limits to these sorts of things, specifically doxing, labelle, slander, uh, and harassment. And unfortunately, KP did not know her rights at the time that this took place. We tried to handle this the way most people would consider quote-unquote the right way. We did this for years and nothing happened. Michael was given several chances to hold himself accountable, but instead chose not to. Everything that happened should be public information within as much as the information was legally recorded that we have. So, any information that we may have uh, that was recorded without consent will not be linked or cited. Similar to how court documents are public information on public figures since Boxy decided to make himself a public figure, I feel like this information should be known. Thirdly, this is a warning to anyone who is thinking of hiring individuals or getting hired. If you do something of this caliber, of the situation that I'm about to present to you, and your employer finds out, not only could they be legally held responsible in your place, but you could be fired or blacklisted for withholding this type of information. Internet hires especially. So the harassment misinformation is still considered fact um, by a lot of people. Uh, and KP putting up with it is still ongoing to this day. Uh, she has lost a lot of sociable opportunities because of rumors linked to this Twitter account. Has been struggling with her mental health for years. People accused her of lies, illegal activity, when she hadn't done anything illegal. Meanwhile, Michael ran this Twitter account, actively post falsified testimonies, knowingly doxed her. Uh, and for the record, uh, the legal definition of doxing is the search for and publication of private and or identifying information about an individual. You can be held legally responsible for doxing on a state-by-state -state basis, smaller cases resulting in fines, larger cases resulting in imprisonment sentences. And it does not matter what you personally think doxing is. That is the definition of doxing. I want you to remember that down the line. He also ignored her requests when he asked what he could do to make things right. Uh, and he didn't do anything. Uh, the effects of the Twitter account resulted in a lot of harassment that KP had to deal with medically. Uh, evidence shows that she was hospitalized for this, that she has been seeing a therapist for this and receiving trauma therapy for this, because, yeah, having people post fake information about you online and harass you and find out where you live, that is a very traumatic experience. And I don't know why everyone is on the side of the liar who actively did illegal things. So that's what we're talking about today. So Michael was fired from the team for lying about his age uh, to be on the team. He uh, also leaked animation assets, files, um, and whips after being fired. I talked with KP about the situation to gather more information, and she said she, quote, had a hunch that he was running the Twitter account based on these past behaviors as well as his passive aggressive nature towards other members of the team, end quote. So I know you dumb fucks have convinced yourselves that harassing people online like this is fine, but again, it's extremely illegal. Defamation of character is a form of slander that goes as far as to directly affect one's financial and social stance and can take you to court over it. But you don't have proof, you say. How do you know it was him? Well, if Corey and Saint's video wasn't proof enough, how about we go over uh, the word straight from the horse's mouth? So Corey uh, and a third party Zach were in a call with Michael a while back. Well, and you know he admitted everything. Uh, you may be thinking, how how do you have this call, and how are you allowed to have it? Well, Corey was in New York at the time of the call where state law dictates that you only need one party's consent to record a call even with multiple parties. Zach consented to the call being recorded and shared, so we're within our rights to have this information. I have the full call linked below if you as the viewer would like to listen to the whole thing in its entirety. To keep things concise, I'll cut down and put evidence specific bits here. And we're gonna go over this call one thing at a time. I'm going to say what timestamps I'm mentioning so that you know exactly what to look for. So, at 15 minutes and 41 seconds, he admits to having the idea for the Twitter account and makes it himself, confirming that he was the one with access to both the email and the account. 
at 16 minutes and 48 seconds. Note how he is deflecting onto other people despite no one accusing him of anything in that exact moment. This type of behavior is often cataloged as stress behavior, usually when someone has been caught doing something wrong. At 17 minutes and 34 seconds, he admits to being one of the main contributors. At 18 minutes and 57 seconds, he claims that the doxing did not happen, then confirms by 19 minutes 42 seconds that he did in fact get her IP address from her Skype and posted it to Twitter for what he claims were 30 seconds. Again, it does not matter what you consider to be doxing in your opinion, Michael. The legal definition of doxing is a search for publication of private and or identifying information about an individual. You published personally identifying information that we have confirmation led to people finding her location. At 20 minutes and 39 seconds, you confirm that you were able to find her previous home state. If someone with no experience doing this sort of thing could find just that much information out, how much could a professional hacker find out, Michael? Riddle me that. So at 22 minutes and 58 seconds, he confirms that he actively looked for her home address. Why? You claimed you weren't going to do anything and that you had no reason to. People don't do things for no reason, Michael. And if you didn't think it would lead to someone finding that out, then why did you publicize it? You knew someone smarter and with more technical experience would and could use that IP address to track her down, and that's why you posted it. You said a moment before that you didn't find anything, then you confirmed you found her home state, and then you confirmed that just now you were actively looking for her home address. Why? So 24 minutes and 19 seconds confirmed slander that some of the things stated were not true. At 26 minutes and 14 seconds, confirmed malicious intent. At 28 minutes, 48 seconds, confirmed a false apology, did not feel sorry for his actions. At 31 minutes, 37 seconds, stated that he lost his job at the time over this and was pissed about it. Now, again, employers can actually be legally held responsible for the behaviors of their employees, even when off duty, especially if the employee is a minor. Michael does not understand the law. His employees most likely did and didn't want to have to pay any potential court restitution on his behalf for his off-duty conduct. So, he was let go. Is it shitty? Yes, but they're within the rights to do so. No legal action was taken because, again, KP did not know her rights at this time, and so she didn't do anything. But they probably didn't know that, and they would be stupid to take the risk. Also, blaming the team for ratting you out in this instance is more petty than them informing your employers, because in this instance, they were legally obligated to inform your employers. You have only yourself and your actions to blame for the consequences that you experienced. At 32 minutes and 47 seconds, he claimed that he made an apology and confirmed that it was fake and he felt no guilt. At 34 minutes and 58 seconds, he admitted that he didn't regret making the account and that he felt that it was the right thing. 37 minutes, 22 seconds, attempted to contact KP to apologize, admitted to lying on the Twitter account, and publicized information that he did not confirm as true. Again, this is defamation of character. I'll explain what that is uh, shortly. So he mentions an email exchange as well. Uh, but falsifies a lot of the information in the exchange. The following is the email exchange that KP and Michael have. I have been given permission from KP to prevent, uh, to present this evidence to you. So here we have his email. I pull it up. It says, hi, Rachel, it's Mike Boggs. Before you decide to immediately delete this email or block this account, I'd like you to hear me out. I'm going to be 100% with you in saying I'd like to formally apologize to you. A lot of time has passed and a lot of thinking has been doing on my end. I guess you can say I've done some growing up. The last time we actually spoke uh, was in a time when I was put on the spot for a situation I barely knew how to handle. It was a half-assed conversation. I didn't want to really apologize then. However, as time passes, minds are changed. It's great that you feel guilty, Michael. I can tell how feel guilty you feel in the next email. Uh, but we're going to continue reading this one. My view on the whole Anon KP leak situation is as follows. I do not regret making it because at the time, I truly believed I was doing something for the better good. 
Michael, this is illegal. I Michael. <laughs> okay. However, things went out of hand fast, and I do regret the outcome of the whole thing. The attention went to my head, and outside influences did not help. This I agree with, and we'll talk about that near the end. The situation ended up not going in the direction I wanted it to. I know how badly this has affected you and your mental health, and there isn't any amount of apologies in the world to fix that. I may not be a fan of yours, but no human being should have to go through what you're going through. I tried to contact you through people in the past, and Antony C. and Anaclome. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. I'm sorry, I'm dyslexic, I'm trying. But I've decided to take a swing at it myself now, after building up the courage since those failed. Now I'm going to let you decide what happens next. You can either not respond to this email, and we can go about our lives, or if you want, we can talk from over here, Discord, Skype, whatever. My original goal was to maybe have a heart-to-heart, -heart, open, and honest conversation with each other. I wanted you to maybe see a few things from my eyes, or explain why I did some things. However, after some thought, I realized that's a long stretch. If you choose the first option, you'll never hear from me again. If you choose the second, though, I'll be looking forward to talking with you. Hopefully, we can look past all this. For now, have a nice day or evening. Peace. P.S. I hope you chose option two, P.P.S. The whole me joining your public Discord thing was me trying to get into contact with you. It wasn't for a joke or a laugh. I promise. So, this is true. You did originally email Rachel to apologize. However, you said that she didn't say anything in response. This is a lie. Here is her response. This is difficult. You haven't made this easy. You were full of ego. You say you've changed your mind, but you don't regret doing what you did. You know how bad this has affected my health. Really? I sometimes don't express myself well, but you assume things about me that weren't true and lied to people to inflate the drama all while I was unable to respond. You used your power to crush me and it hurt a lot. And you don't regret doing what you did. What exactly is it that you want from me? But then you say that you do regret the outcome. What, that you got caught? So, what, you'll be more careful next time? Will there be a next time? What direction were you expecting it to go? You say that you know how badly this affected me. Would you like to speak to my parents to find out if that's true? I'll, I will arrange this if you're serious. Nice to know that you're not a fan, thanks. You want to talk to me as though we're equals. You're a proven liar, mudraker, and gossip. How can I ever trust you, even with little things like a private conversation? Practically no one I know wants me to ever have anything to do with you. Your actions have cost my family thousands of dollars in therapy bills, and now I have a disability. Never hearing from you, again, would be an easy blessing. This part I want you to pay attention to. You want peace. You want to look yourself in the mirror and see a good guy. Ask yourself what you would tell someone who is about to do what you did to me and tell everyone. Clear the air to the public would be a good start in a way that's not directed to just me and one that you don't admit you faked your way through after the fact. I'm sorry you were afraid of having the video spread around. That's the tip of the iceberg. Do you even realize how this has affected my team, my friends, my family, even now? You say you want to apologize to me, but this is not just me. Make the video, name all relevant parties, it'd be a start. This conversation will not continue until I see that. Again, in the call, Michael claimed that KP did not contact him back and that that was the end of the discussion. She has clearly indicated that she wants a formal apology to all affected parties. Michael then responded, all I can say is this. I was delusional and let things get to my head. If I were to go back and change things, I wouldn't have slandered and said such harsh comments, only facts. Also, I would have made an actual apology video being sincere instead of just trying to BS my way out of the whole drama. I also wouldn't have been anonymous. I was a coward, though. However, that didn't happen, then that's what I do regret. I don't hold grudges. It's not really in my nature. All I want from you is nothing. Keeping you. I'm only trying to apologize and make my point. I've been over this drama and anything else drama related to you for over a year and a half now. It's not worth my time. I'm also not here to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to pretend I'm someone wanting to be friends. I do, however, feel it's necessary to be mature that we both act like adults to each other. You're saying that, and yet you also said with your whole chest in this email, um... 
that you're already over the drama that you've moved on, that it's not worth your time. Yet Rachel's been harassed every single day on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, in her YouTube comments. Um, people have spread lies about her. Uh, and you actively encouraged a bunch of other people on the team to also do inappropriate things, like the fan cam. So, it's nice that you get to move on. And then he quotes her saying, Want to look yourself in the mirror and see a good guy. This really stuck with me. For a good while, you know? I look in the mirror and I only see a person who's made good and bad choices. I personally believe it's up to interpretation by anyone who isn't me to determine if I'm a good or bad guy. I only see me. If I'm a bad guy to your eyes, then I can't change that even if I try. She literally said that you could apologize uh, and make an effort that would be a start to stop being seen as a bad guy. That's the thing. A lot of people like this like to say, this is just who I am. It's just my nature. I can't change your mind. You are in control of your actions and what you do and what you say and how you present yourself. You can and you are choosing not to. And that's something that you need to acknowledge. And then he goes on to say, I won't truly ever know what it's like to be you. I've only heard how badly this has affected you. I can't pretend I know what it's like, not only for you, but for the people around you as well. That's something I never intended and something I wouldn't ever wish upon anybody. If somebody were to do something like that I did to you, I'd tell them, it's not worth it. Just let it be. The outcome may not be what you're expecting. Because the whole drama ended up wasting everybody's time and energy. That's the biggest fact. You're right, it did waste everybody's time and energy. And it's great that you get to move on, but the rest of us don't get to. And then he quotes her again saying, how can I ever trust you even with little things like a private conversation? All I can say to that is that if I were you, I could never trust me either. That's something I can get, trust. It's a very powerful word. If you don't want a private conversation, then we can just throw that thought away. It was just a suggestion I thought would maybe help bring our perspectives together. This is the kicker for me. So he goes on to say, he goes on to quote her and say, you say you want to apologize to me, but this is not just me. Make the video, name all relevant parties, end quote. That's just the thing though, I've apologized to everyone already privately forever ago. <laughs> but I never truly did to you, hence why I contacted you in the first place. I already did make a video back in October on my MLP account, expressing my thoughts and everything that happened. It may not be as clear as it was in the email, but it gets all the same points across. Michael, you privated that video after 24 hours. You did not apologize to all parties. She literally said that you needed to apologize to her and her parents and family, too. You didn't. <laughs> Uh, back to the email, though. Um, I'm not going to make any more videos. Sorry, I just don't see the point. It's irrelevant. I'll leave you with this. Just know I don't have a grudge, grudge or hate towards you. I don't want to be involved in any other person's meddling with you, which I hope doesn't happen. And I wish you the best. I wish you the best and luck in your life, and I'll leave you alone now because I know that to you that is a blessing. So, peace. So not only did KP tell you exactly what you could do to make things right without having to suffer the legal consequences and offered an avenue for you to talk with her parents as witnesses, but she also gave you the opportunity to make things right with all affected parties and you decided not to because you already made an apology video. Again, you privated that video after 24 hours of making it, uh, which was two years before you had this conversation and that video was a fake apology. You are not making a good case for yourself here. And you didn't apologize to all affected parties. Because KP and her parents are still paying for it. So, at 44 minutes and 27 seconds, confirmed team targeting admitted to not caring about the well-being of the team. So you claimed that this Twitter account represented the whole team and their gripes. And now you're acknowledging that you didn't represent the team as a whole and that you knew your affections that your actions would have a negative effect on the team members, but you did it anyways. Are you that much of a narcissist to put yourself that high above everybody else? How the fuck do you still manage to get work? This is hazard employee behavior. 
This is shit you can get blacklisted for, Michael. It seems like this was his main motivation for doing all of this in the first place, which is never something an employer wants to hear about, let alone have that energy in their workplace. I'm gonna go off script for a minute. Seriously, I cannot emphasize this as much. Like, I can't. This is anti-teamwork attitude. This is stuff that you get fired for. This is stuff that I look for when hiring people, and I reject these types of people. This is not employee behavior. This is not an employee attitude, because no matter what type of job you have, you are almost always working with someone. Even if you're not working with them directly, your job affects their job. Nine times out of ten. You went out of your way to claim that you represented the team as a whole. And you didn't! And you knew it was going to bite some of the team members in the ass and affect them negatively. Even, like, looking back at the script, 51, se 51 minutes, 38 seconds, claimed that you only knew two people who were directly affected by your actions. Four years after the fact, I don't even know what your face looks like, Michael, and the rest of us are still here trying to clean up your damn mess. There were others involved, yes, as you were quick to throw them under the bus. Mag, for example, uh, individually illegally recorded a call with KP without the, cons without the consent um, of a third party who was involved in the call, uh, and was recorded to use as blackmail anonymously in case she was ever called out for her actions related to the account. However, Max can no longer use the call as blackmail, as we have it. Uh, but the call was recorded without the consent of KP or the other third party who was also in the call. Um, and since we do not have the third party's consent to release the call, it will not be released. This does not change the fact that recording a call without one or all parties' consent dependent on state or country law is illegal, and that information gathered in said call cannot be held against people Yet, Mag intended to use this call as blackmail if she ever was called out, uh, and she sent it to FNGR, uh, the mosquito-looking motherfucker, I don't know. Um, the fucked up links that people go to in order to deny accountability is messed up. It's fucked up that a group of adults decided that boistering around a 15-year-old's hate circle jerk instead of voicing their issues to the current project manager or caper herself uh, was that's like really fucked up. That's what they should have done, but that's what they chose not to do. Their behavior was extremely inappropriate, and they should have known better. What I'm about to say now is just a hunch, and I can't confirm this. But from the way that Boxy talked about his parents, how they didn't care that he did this, and how they let him actively engage online with people several decades his senior as a minor, I feel like he didn't get a lot of attention from them or discipline, and so he felt the need to act out. Toxic adults in his circle encouraging his behaviors gave him the attention and vindication he was looking for, so he took things even further. Which is seriously messed up considering how fast these grown-ass adults were to throw him under the bus just as quickly. This in no way justifies his behavior, and like I said, that's just a hunch. I can't confirm that, but it would coincide with his behaviors. It would also explain why he still won't hold himself accountable for it as an adult now. It seems like no one in his circle of influence actively tried to steer him in a concrete direction, so he's still developmentally unable to actively make any real changes or efforts in his life thus far to rectify anything. He'll make a show for it, he'll try to imply that he'll do better, uh, and then when he's given the opportunity, he'll avoid it. You yourself just said that you shouldn't have done it and that everyone's time was wasted that you just wanted to move on from this. Well, I'm not letting you. I'm the one who's going to hold you accountable, because from what I can see, no one else was willing to step up and help you with that. We waited out the storm, we thought all this drama would pass, and there's still a lot of untrue information that's floating around because these facts were not broadcast publicly enough. If I wanted to expose you for your illegal nonsense, for years, but KP didn't want me to because she's an unnecessarily nice person. I am not. I am shit incarnate. So now that we've gone over the evidence, just for shits and giggles, let's go over the potential legal consequences that you could have faced, shall we? 
The following information is taken from several legal website sources. I'm not about to HTML format this stuff because I'm not in high school anymore, but all of the links are listed below. So at the time that all of this took place, KP resided uh, in a specific state that will not be mentioned. So we will be going off of general US law in California state law being the epicenter of, of entertainment in the states. So a defamation lawsuit needs to be enacted within the year that it took place, which is why KP again was not able to take action because she did not know her rights at the time. So defamation per se, also known as slander and label, is listed under general defamation law as implemented by the United States. A majority of the falsified accusations revolved around quote unquote contracts that he had to sign. Uh, this is untrue as the closest thing to a contract is the verbal agreement NDA. Uh, it's written and defined by past and current team members to protect the assets and projects the team members are working on. Uh, this NDA is not legally binding as it's just a trust word of mouth scenario and no legal actions can be taken against individuals who violate it. With pers we want to make sure that you know that because for one, some team members are from other countries and we don't have extensive worldly law. Um, and it's just highlighted that so that we know that you understand that. Other rumors involved actual slave driving, quote unquote, which is also untrue. The team is a completely voluntary thing. You aren't contracted to stay for any specific amount of time and you're free to leave whenever you need to or want to. You could straight up walk out and there would be no legal consequences. Working on the team is work, yes, but it's ultimately a hobby for everyone involved. It's a hobby taken professionally, but it's a hobby. There's no official location, there's no office, there's no place where the channel is located. You work on what you volunteer for, where you are, however you'd like to. Michael once again admitted to not fact checking that information uh, that was given to him and actively admitted to falsifying the information. So, how did this affect her? Well, this was a debasing act that uh, excludes him or her from society. That's what uh, this is effectively called. Uh, refers to the trade office or profession of another person and is calculated to injure him slash her. Uh, KP lost a lot of subscribers, uh, and it's been a slow climb to get more subscribers ever since. Uh, even in a state where defamation isn't as rampant as places like New York or California where most entertainment industries are located, they still have these protections in place to ensure the safety of people who have been wrongfully accused of illegal acts. Exhibit A. Uh, BabsCon 2017, one of our team artists was rejected from attendance, as you can see here. Interesting enough, they were worried about Babbitt image and rejected someone on hearsay. Uh, but when a staff member was exposed for literally being a pedophile, they wrung their hands and tried to hide it. Interesting. And another video linked below by Anthony C and KP, they also go over the fake laws, quote unquote, that people accuse KP of breaking by using leaked animation puppets from several years ago. Uh, so it was not illegal for her to use those puppets, but she still learned from that experience. And ever since then, all of the art and animation assets that are used on the channel are made from scratch from the awesome, amazing team of artists that I have had the opportunity to work with. Even when she wasn't doing anything illegal by using them, she decided to move forward with original works and art because she felt that that was the honest thing to do morally. Just wanted to throw that out there. So that's on defamation. Let's move on to doxing. So in general, USA says doxing is illegal. It doesn't fall, it, it's complicated. It falls under different, very specific categories depending on which state you're located in. For some states, it falls under slander and libel, and for others, it falls under harassment and cyberbullying. But across all boards, it's illegal. So, Penal Code 653.2 PC is California's law against posting harmful material on the internet. It is so sometimes referred to as the Indirect Electronic Harassment or Indirect Cyber Harassment Law. This is because the comments invite or encourage someone other than the person making them to harass or threaten the subject. Uh, so, civil suits uh, for this would be invasion of privacy, uh, yeah, actively seeking out her IP address, which was not public information, obtaining it, posting it online, admitting to his harmful intentions and to be intimidating, 
uh, he would be held under these charges. But Wendy, he was only 15. Don't you think that's harsh on a minor? He actively stated several times that he had intentions to hurt and slander Rachel and actively sought out her home address. He instigated, despite knowing that this was wrong, and he knew it was wrong, because of how defensive he got in the call. Again, timestamp, 18 minutes, 57 seconds. Even minors are held legally responsible for this sort of behavior. Here are some potential verdicts for his crimes, according to state and international law. Well, not international, national, but... Penalties for the offense of stalking, in this case, doxing. So a person who commits the offense of stalking is guilty of a misdemeanor, which is punishable by a fine and or up to 12 months in jail. Upon a second conviction of stalking, a person shall be guilty of a felony and be punished by imprisonment for no less than one year and no more than 10 years. So because he was a minor, his parents and our legal guardians would have likely been fined on his behalf. Uh, he would not have been detained in prison. He would most likely would have ended up in juvenile detention, uh, along with some community service of some kind, and possible restrictions such as a restraining order. As for defamation, the legal consequences are dependent on whether or not the form of defamation is considered slander or libel. Because they were written testimonies on Twitter, which can still be easily tracked down through screenshots and proof provided on YouTube by the very rant channels that try to damage and harm KB's reputation, this lawsuit would fall under LaBelle, making the damage awarded much more costly. According to California law, LaBelle is a false and unprivileged publication by writing, printing, picture, effigy, or other fixed representation to the eye, which exposes any person to hatred, contempt, ridicule, or a... I can't even pronounce that word. I'm sorry. Uh... But essentially, it causes him to be shunned or avoided, or which tends to injure him or her and its occupation. However, according to all of the sites that I've investigated, damages awarded would be defined by the court with nothing concrete written as a minimum or maximum sentence. So the cost would more likely go to uh, the psychological damages, uh, financial restitution uh, that costs KP, hospitalization therapy, and trauma therapy. I don't have a concrete number for this, and I'd feel weird asking KP's parents for their financial records. And this is a hypothetical scenario, uh, not an actual court case, uh, but she did give me a general estimate of about $5,000 to present date. Uh, here's some evidence KP was willing to provide me with to show proof of, again, hospitalization and therapy. So, if this situation still does not sound like a big deal to you, then how come the legal ramifications are even more detrimental than getting in a car accident in some cases? I'm still paying court restitution for a fender bender two years ago, and it cost me less than this would have cost Michael and his family. So here's the long and short of it, you fucking pillow-biting bottoms. I've given you the evidence. You now have a choice. You can either A, leave KP alone, for shit that never happened and hold the actual individual socially accountable who should be or be deal with why white knighting ass but instead of continuing the conversation because there is no room for arguments here i will tag you in pictures of clown meat when i'm bored and tired i cannot emphasize this enough kp is a nice person i am not I will hold these people accountable because they've been given years to do the right thing, and they chose not to. All of this? Nonsense. No one tried to talk with KP and claim that she was this terrible person. Meanwhile, I was able to communicate with her almost every day, without fail, and be completely honest with her. Sometimes too honest. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes she'd hit me up and be like, hey, are you around to talk? And I'd be like, no, nah, I'm riding my boyfriend like a boar right now. Can we talk tomorrow? And she'd be like, yeah, great. Didn't need to know about that. And then I'd be like, well, where's the fun in that? If I can frankly tell her that and have my privacy and time respected, then you can tell your employer that you need a day off or that you'd be unavailable or that you want to quit without doxing them. So final thoughts on this situation. Bad behavior can and will eventually catch up to you in both social and work circles. Many employers do legal and social media background checks and investigations. If they find anything that does not match with what you have told them, or if you have done anything that they could be held accountable for in place of you, they have every right to fire you. 
and they would be smart too. But usually, if you are upfront about anything that could look bad on their end, they're more lenient, understanding, and willing to work with you because you're willing to work with them. I've worked with people who have had criminal backgrounds. One individual who I will not name was even on a daytime TV show where you expose your ex for inappropriate behavior, and he was the ex. He showed everyone the video because if you cannot hold yourself accountable for your history, you cannot be trusted to work on a team environment. The fact that Michael effectively went out of his way to erase his association with his behavior did not inform his current employer of this, and yes, it is relevant because it's an entertainment industry job, even going as far as to delete his old Twitter account and create a new persona, it just shows how far he will go to lie to everyone he's associated with and not hold himself accountable. I would actively discourage content creators from hiring people who behave like this, obviously. Catch the signs first. Lying on resumes, lying about their age, knowledge, or being vindictive or selfish when being around others. Some other dead giveaways to catch early on are as follows. Interrupting people intentionally, victim blaming or shifting the blame onto others, irrationally defensive behavior, not able to take criticism well, especially when no one is being accused of anything at first, shifting eye movements and extremely fidgeting behavior that isn't their usual default. I specify that because some people confuse stimming with this. It's not the same. I'm talking about unusual shifts in body language and behavior that aren't typical for that person. If you are pissed off about this, and you'd like to hold Michael accountable, here's what I think you should do, and do not do anything different. If you see him online, ask him why he hasn't held himself accountable for this and apologized yet. That's it. That's literally all you're expected to do. Do not look for him. Do not harass him or anyone else. I literally ranted about how illegal it is to go out of your way to cyberstalk and harass someone. Holding someone publicly accountable for their actions and providing evidence that could be equally used in a courtroom is the way to go after you've tried to solve things behind closed doors the right way. Again, this was the last resort, not the first strike. I swear to God, I do not want to see this bullshit again. Second, if Michael is hired for work, do not harass the people who hire him. While many employers conduct extensive background checks, they typically do not do so with contract workers if they aren't official employees. I am the crazy person who does because I take honesty and accountability of people extremely seriously. I'd recommend anyone else to do the same. I provided the evidence. I provided a bit of my own speculation that I confirmed as speculation, so do not cite it as fact or you'll look like clown meat. And provided advice to anyone else who will be faced with this sort of thing in the future. And how employees and employers should treat their history and behavior. I will not be commenting on this further, because I refuse to re reiterate any more information. You have it all. Everything I can give you. It's there. If you try to make a response video, I will not be responding to it. If you try to contact me about this, I will spam you with pictures of clown meat over and over. That is all I need to say.